Hi, we are live right here on Facebook land. This is Linda Marcus Smith, the host of 702 comedy interviews whenever I feel like it. And now we're hosting on Fridays at 3 p.m. Pacific. 6 p.m. Eastern and something in the middle. We're offering free jokes for military veterans, their families, caregivers, nurses, workers, whatever, anybody around the military and the veterans, free jokes Fridays and free jokes on Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific, add three for New York and something in the middle. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a sponsor, Don Sill, comedian, producer, writer, actor out of Long Island, New York, or should I say Long Island, New York. Don Sill out of Governor's Clubs, the three clubs on Long Island that are the biggest, Governor's Clubs. Governor's is behind us all the way through Don Sill. So Governor's is an official sponsor of us doing this. So hey. thank you to them. They're very pro-military. They're very pro-comedians rising up. There's no better way to rise up than to do good for others. And there's no other group of people I know and that Gary Held here knows that we would love to make laugh any more than our own military. That's right, we're both military veterans and we're giving up our time and our lives in different ways to make you laugh. So let me just tell you, you're a novice to what I'm doing, so just kick back and relax in your easy chairs, you lazy boys, <laughs> and relax, right? Just have fun. We're not gonna go political on you. We're not gonna do things that trigger you. So don't worry about that. And by the way, who came up with the word trigger? Not a good word. Anyway, I'm Linda Marcus Smith and I just wanna tell you a couple quick jokes so you get the feel of hearing a joke and laughing so that when we get to the real jokes, you're ready. So when you hear a joke, They'll go lickety split through the premise, the setup, and they'll slow down for the punchline. And that's where you laugh. Got it? Okay, so let's try a few. I'm Linda Marcus Smith. That's three words because I heard the best things come in threes. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. So I come from a very progressive town. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, I can tell by the laughter you've heard a little, but look at me. Do I look progressive? The most progressive thing I ever did was get on the phone and try to spend 15 minutes to save 15% on car insurance. And that was weird because I don't even own a car or drive. <laughs> I wanted to be progressive. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I never done anything progressive other than that. But one time I almost kissed a, a sorry, I almost kissed a Portland barista. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. It was all his fault that I wanted to kiss him. Not because of what he was wearing, because he said I looked just like Marilyn. And I was like, oh my God, she's beautiful. He goes, no, Marilyn Manson. Oh. Bad hair day or a bad makeup day? I still <laughs> don't know. So that's how you laugh at a joke. Now you understand what we're doing up here. It's to forget what's in your head, forget anything that's in your past that might be blocking you from just kicking back and laughing. That's what we want to do for you. So go along for this crazy little ride as we get out of our heads too. I'd like to give up the stage. I know you want me to give up comedy, but I'm only gonna give up the <laughs> stage to our amazing only guest. He's my only fan. That's a pun, Never mind. Today, a veteran we have here today is the amazing Gary Held, and he's gonna do jokes for you just like I did, maybe better. Let's find out. Here we go. Give it up for Gary Held. Yay! Yay! 
Hey, good Hi. afternoon, Linda. Thank you. I'm Gary Held, the sit down comic. I'm an eight year veteran of the Air Force, four as a medic and four as a recruiter. You're probably all wondering why I am the sit down comic. It's because I'm lazy and I'm old. <laughs> and I sit out there, I'm tired because I look at all of you people having your cocktail and sitting in a chair laughing at my jokes while I hobble my ass up here and sit on a stool trying to make you laugh every day. <laughs> but really, Linda, the reason I'm the sit-down comic is I've had multiple sclerosis MS for 40 years. But MS to me stands for my shit because MS messes with my legs and MS messes with my eyes and MS messes with my brain. So I said, perfect, I'll get into comedy. <laughs> and I did. In 2016, I entered comedy on a dare, believe it or not. And I did my first open mic at the House of Comedy in Phoenix, Arizona. And over the course of the next several days, I got to meet Rick Bronson, the owner of the House of Comedy. He owns four of them, three in the States and one in Canada. And over the course of those three days, Rick and I were talking and he said to me, Gary, you've got big balls to get into comedy at 64 years old. And my first thought was, <laughs> how does Rick know I have big balls? <laughs> I, I mean, I do, but did, is it just a wild guess? <laughs> was there a meeting in those three days that I forgot about something that might have happened? <laughs> but you know what got me thinking, Linda? It got me thinking about women that get into comedy. Do they have to have big tits to get into comedy? Do women have to have a big giant pussy to get into comedy? I just know this. I'm a gimp. And by the time I get my way up onto the stage and <laughs> sit on my stool and deliver my jokes, the club is probably going to impose a second two drink minimum, all you suckers. <laughs> and you know I've, I've been doing this now for several years and of all the clubs I've been to in Arizona I've only had one club that's ADA accessible only one so I came to the conclusion that in Arizona there's not a lot of comics that are gimps and the owner said fuck it why spend the money on an ADA stage <laughs> so, you know really Linda just like just like you and all the rest of the comics that participate in your shows you know we do this for the money you know <laughs> you know I can't say it with a straight face you, you know we do it for the money because where else can you spend all your time creating the jokes, then spend all your time rehearsing the jokes, and then spend five to 45 minutes in front of an audience making them laugh. Where else can you make that kind of money? Well, let's see. How about the Dominican Republic? <laughs> or maybe Bangladesh or Botswana? You know, really, we don't do this for the money. We do this. I do this anyway, and I'm sure you do too. I do this because I want to make people laugh. I wanna make people laugh so hard that they're gonna pee their pants because I think that's funny. I wanna make people laugh, Linda, so hard that when I deliver my punchline, they're gonna spit out their drink in their mother-in-law's face because <laughs> I think that's funny. I wanna make people laugh so hard that they might snort or fart <laughs> or maybe snort and fart. God damn it, Linda, let's just, I want everybody pissing and spitting and snorting and farting and only then will we have earned the kind of money that we should earn as yes. comics. And yes. I love it. That's fun. You know, Linda, I, I told you before I live in Arizona and it's hot. It has been so hot, unusually hot. I've lived here 37 years, but it's so hot in Arizona this summer that I have to carry my condoms in a cooler. <laughs> it is so hot in Arizona that hookers are renting my bedroom just for the air conditioning. Wow. You know, last night it's so hot in Arizona that last night I cooked my steak to a medium rare before I put it on the grill. <laughs> it's, it's hot here. You know, I, I work a lot of 55 plus communities, maybe because I'm 55 plus. And, <laughs> and I remember the days I used to think these communities were really corny, that everybody lived in the same kind of house and the same kind of street. But I got to tell you, the developers of these communities were brilliant because they brought a group of like-minded people together. And those people come together and they get to share things of common interest, things of it that are important to them, like bingo and blood pressure and high cholesterol and mammograms and prostate exams, just to name a few. Oh, wait, <laughs> let's not forget about the weather, whether or not they got any chance of getting laid tonight. <laughs> Linda, do you know that in Arizona, STDs run rampant in these 55 plus communities? Wow. These folks are, are spending all their time mattress dancing. <laughs> they, they are banging more than Keith Moon of the Who. 
you know, and a lot of people don't know this, but they're very conscious about their planet. Everywhere you look in these communities, you see electric vehicles, electric wheelchair there, electric motorized scooter over there, electric <laughs> golf cart over there. They really do care about the planet. But for, but for some reason, they get a bad rap. People think they're stupid. These people aren't stupid. Linda, they have happy hour every night at five o'clock. <laughs> and most of them are in bed by eight o'clock. <laughs> but I got to tell you, the blue pill industry is thriving because of these communities. They're thriving. <laughs> and if by chance, any one of those guys gets a hard on it lasts more than four hours, I'm telling you that Woody is acting like a tent pole holding up the sheets and blankets because <laughs> he'll be long asleep before that thing goes soft. <laughs> hey, did I mention how hot it is in Arizona? <laughs> yeah, well, do I'm some more. You, do let an me hour. tell you, it, it is so hot in Arizona that my windshield shade melted in the car. Oh my gosh. It is so hot in Arizona that the sweat on my balls evaporates before I can chafe. Oh my gosh. And I don't know if that's a bad thing. That might be a benefit. It's so hot in Arizona that the other day my girlfriend was giving me a blowjob and she said, you taste a little salty. So I said, would you like a lime? What'd you say? Would you like a lime? <laughs> I thought I tasted salty. I thought I'd ask her if she wanted a lime. You know, Linda, have you ever watched a hummingbird up close? I have a, a hummingbird feeder right outside of the window where I write my jokes. And I have the feeder right there so I can watch them when I'm writing my jokes. That's an incredible little fucking bird. They're the smallest migrating bird. They fly, they're only this big. They fly 25 miles an hour and they can migrate over 500 miles nonstop. Now that's gotta be one tired little fucking bird when they get to their destination. They're not looking for sugar water when they get to Mexico. They want a fucking margarita. <laughs> and you know what, Linda, they weigh less than a nickel. So they're gonna get fucked up pretty quick. I bet that messes up with their ability to fly backwards and upside down. Hover now, you little fucker. Hummingbirds are great. All right, so tonight, Linda, it's just you and I in the audience. But some men are going to see this, and I have a lesson for the men tonight. You know, you've all heard the phrase, it's as easy as one, two, three. Well, not everything is, folks. When it comes to women and their orgasms, there's nothing easy about it. Now, for us men, it's easy. You can touch it, you can suck it, you can stroke it, and we're going to go off like Vesuvius. But not women. No, they have to make the simple act of sex complicated. And how are we supposed to know? We're men. So pay attention, men, because I want you to go home tonight with information with the price of your ticket, or maybe even the price of your two drink minimum. <laughs> so here are the three types of orgasms, uh, orgasms that we're going to talk about. Vaginal, clitoral, <laughs> and the G-spot. Now, technically, Linda, there are two more. One, the erogenous zone. But if I look around the room, most men have no clue how they're going to make that happen. So we'll not talk about that. And two, anal. And I don't really give a shit about that, so we're not going to go there either. <laughs> so let's start with the vaginal orgasm. Now, men, believe it or not, this may not even require your unit. You have greater success using your finger in this motion, the come hither motion. <laughs> so you just have to get busy with a repetitive come hither, come <laughs> hither. And you may even want to throw around a little circle once in a while. When performed with a skill that I know you have, well, most of you, well, some of you, it won't be long and you'll have her moaning like a wild dog. Uh -huh. and, and then there's the clitoral orgasm. And believe it again, believe it or not, men, remember this too may not even require your unit. The first thing you have to do, now listen carefully. The first thing you have to do is you have to get under the hood of the vulva. Vulva, men, not Volvo, vulva. Once you get there, it may require some lube. Again, I know why you get confused. So a little loop for assistance. You can gently rub the clip with your palm, your fingers or your tongue in a back and forth motion. Now, men, you're not licking an ice cream cone from Dairy Queen. This is her pussy, so treat it accordingly. The trick is to apply repetitive motion with a little harder pressure. When you know she's on the edge, increase the pressure and she will soon explode like the grand finale of the Gilbert 4th of July fireworks display. And finally, Linda, there's yes. the elusive G-spot. <laughs> okay, listen carefully. This information can be the victory in the bedroom that you've been waiting for. The home run 
the bedroom blue ribbon. So here goes. Oh, that's my light. That's my time. I'm Gary Held, the Sit Down Comic, and you are on your own from here. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Gary Held. Thank oh you. my God. Thank you. That's the best sex TED talk I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, a little bit more about me, Linda Marcus Smith. <laughs> Did I mention my name? <laughs> a little bit more about me. I have a twin brother. That's right, my twin. And he's funny. Oh my gosh. You know what he says about me, you guys? He says that I look just like him in drag. <laughs> <laughs> I was born first by 30 minutes. So by 30 minutes, he's technically my afterbirth <laughs> <laughs> i you know this last birthday that we had gary he embarrassed the socks off of me by coming out as a 70 year old oh wow i don't do that you know i don't tell people i'm 7, 69 70 i i use math it's a <laughs> superpower you know 21 times three they are lost <laughs> 21 times three plus none of your business <laughs> and i'm a boomer from the northwest so i don't have much self-esteem i mean who came up with the word self-esteem as if we're supposed to get it from ourselves millennials get it from themselves not boomers we older people older women got our self-esteem from men like gary he, people like Gary gave me my self-esteem by calling, cat calling, tell me babe, chick, whatever. That made me feel wanted, you know? And now, as a result, I'm addicted to attention and compliments. But you got to give me good compliments, you guys. I'm sick of the bad ones. I don't want to hear, I look good for my age. He just took a compliment away from me. Right. <laughs> you know, if you end a compliment with a preposition for your, your age, trust me, your night's not ending in no proposition. <laughs> it's not happening. Stop doing it. Somebody said, oh, you're 70. Well, age is just a number. Oh, yeah. Age is a number. It's just a number. Like Mount St. Helens is just a hill. Like, I don't know, like perhaps a great white shark is just a fish. Maybe it, like capital insurrection is the new national board of tourism. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Age is just a number. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I don't know. I always wear prom gowns and hooker heels all over Las Vegas where I live to get the attention I grew up getting, you know, because I heard in Vegas with a little bit of chutzpah, you can be anything you want. What do I care if they think I'm literally or figuratively a hooker? I don't care. I'm too old to care. I just need attention and comment. I need a car to honk at me. That's what I would want to come to Vegas and honk at me, please. Sure. I've been walking in the middle of Vegas Boulevard to hear a honk. <laughs> One time somebody honked. I wasn't sure if they were honking at me or because I was in the way. So I jumped on the hood of their car, started banging. And I was like, you honking? I did my Robert De Niro. You honking at me? You better be honking at me. Do you uh, have any idea how long it took to lift this good? 21 times three and math is a superpower. <laughs> oh my gosh. And now my life is about doing comedy for military and vets. That's all I care about. The real heroes, veterans, not doctors and horses and cats and dogs. Real veterans, real military. That's all I really care about, right? And when I'm making you guys laugh and forget what you had to do so us comics can sling jokes in English, oh my gosh, I get tingly all over my body. 
sometimes up inside my body, like Gary was alluding to. <laughs> so I'm always going to keep going out and finding another GI spot. Can't find the go. G, but I like <laughs> over it. the GI seems to be easier. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple quick puns because nothing is complete without just a pun. Did you hear that? The Israel, the state of Israel, country of Israel, has a new prime minister. And as a result, I guess his name is Bennett or something. Anyway, as a result of the new prime minister, they no longer have internet and email service. Yeah, because there's no more net in Yahoo. <laughs> That's a good pun. That's a good pun. Thank you. I also heard that there was a funeral place that cremated a body of a rich man. And two different families were quabbling and arguing over which family owned the remains because they, the, the ashes, they, they both said that it was theirs. There was this big lawsuit, it's still in court, which means it still has remains to be seen. Uh. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Thank you. Do you know the first time was in the Bible that they mentioned car trouble, Gary? No. When Moses threw a rod in the yeah. desert. <laughs> <laughs> and the last joke, I know I said three, but who can count? Yeah. The last joke I'm going to do, this is your last chance at home to laugh. I sent in my packet for my DNA ancestry stuff. And what did I get back? I got back a ballerina skirt and a dick pic. <laughs> and you know what that means, everybody. <laughs> I, Linda Marcus Smith, have been officially me tutued. Ah, I like it. Thank you all for listening to our military comedy. And we'll be back tomorrow at 11 Pacific, 2 Eastern, and something in the middle. This has been Linda Marcus Smith and my only guest today, Gary Held. Thanks, Linda. Thank you, Gary. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, bright and early. OK. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your heart. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.